everyone, in today's video we're going to be comparing the Sony a7 III to the Canon 5D Mark IV in low light situations while taking portraits. So I just want to say a big thank you to my sister Georgina for being today's model, I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to be going around to a few different locations and playing around with different lighting scenarios and different camera settings to compare how the low light works in both the Sony and the Canon. The first test that we're going to do is taking some simple portraits on the side of the street with available lighting. This is probably the most light that we have throughout this entire video, just to start off with something simple. And I had both my cameras with the same settings. My shutter was 1 over 200, my ISO was at 6400, and my f-stop was at 1.4. Some advantages that people say the Canon 5D Mark IV has over the Sony a7 III is that Canon has 30 megapixels in the Mark IV, whereas Sony only has 24 megapixels. However, in low light situations, having less megapixels is actually a benefit as it allows a larger pixel pitch. So typically, the bigger the pixel, the more light it lets in. From the first batch of images that we captured at ISO 6400, both the Sony and Canon photos were really clean and I was really happy with the results from both camera bodies. We also tried some movement shots where my sister was walking towards me. For these shots, I bumped up my shutter to 1 over 400 to avoid movement blur, so I set my ISO to 12,800 on both cameras, and my f-stop was still at 1.4. An advantage the Sony a7 III has is eye autofocus, which worked really great in this low light situation, as well as built-in image stabilization, which the Canon does not have. Despite these two advantages, both the Sony and Canon photos both turned out really sharp with little to no motion blur. At ISO 12800 with our movement shots, both cameras are starting to have a little noise, but I'm personally preferring what the Sony green is looking like. The Canon green looks a little rough and it really stands out on my sister's face. In the Sony image, however, the noise is looking a little bit smoother and finer and also isn't as distracting on her face. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, all these photos that I'm showing you are raw, straight out of the camera, not edited whatsoever. The next test that I wanted to try was finding a relatively darker spot and use sparklers to light up my subject. If you've watched my Am I Switching to Sony video, you would know that I purchased a Sony a7 III for my wedding photography. Specifically, I got it to be able to photograph with natural light during the reception, which is typically at night, which means these are low light situations. So during weddings, it's become more and more popular to do sparkler exits, so that's why we're using sparklers to light up my my sister in today's portraits. We ended up heading to the beach where there were these giant floodlights that I ended up using as backlight and a little bit of ambient light as well. Here is where I started seeing the biggest difference in the quality of images. So something that I find that Canon does is that in low light situations, the raw photos that are straight out of the camera are very contrasty, which makes it really hard to be able to edit. As you can see in these examples, the images from the Sony straight out of the camera are a lot flatter, and this makes for a better base to be able to edit photos without having to push them too far. In more technical terms, the Sony a7 III has 14.7 stops of dynamic range, whereas the Canon 5D Mark IV has 13.6 stops. Usually dynamic range is something you compare for daylight pictures, however, people forget dynamic range comes in really handy at night as well. The flatter Sony images straight out of the camera is also probably due to Sony's back illuminated sensor. Also, a quick note, I had noise reduction off in both the Sony a7 III and the Canon 5D Mark IV. 
In this case, and due to all these factors, I preferred what the Sony images look like and what I was able to do with them in post since they were flatter than the Canon photos. Next we decided to try the sparklers in a darker location where we didn't have any ambient light whatsoever so my sister would only be lit up from the light of the sparklers. Also, I just wanted to mention that while I'm showing you these photos and sharing the camera settings with you, um, in a lot of these scenarios, I am pushing the ISO a lot higher than I need to. I could definitely, in some cases, pull down my shutter speed and then use a lower ISO, but we really want to be able to see just how far we can push these cameras and what the results are from each of them. And here are the raw photos that are lit up only by sparklers with no ambient light around us whatsoever. I wanted to have a little bit of fun and I noticed all the stars were out that night and looked super bright in the sky so I wanted to see if I could capture like a creative portrait with my sister and kind of get the stars in the background as well. So I ended up pushing the ISO of the Sony to 80,000 and managed to get a few handheld pictures with my sister and the stars in the shot. And again I just wanted to mention I'm not trying to get photos for my portfolio here I really just wanted to play around with settings and push them as far as I could to see what the results are. So afterwards I went to try and get the same shot on Canon, however the max ISO I could do was 25,600, so obviously the entire frame was just black and I can't get a comparison photo so we only have this one Sony photo. And just so you can see how I would edit something like this, here is a little speed edit of me trying to clean up that Sony photo and make it look as nice as possible, just so you know what's capable from an image shot at 80,000 ISO. And that pretty much concludes all the experiments we did that day with the Sony a7 III and the Canon 5D Mark IV. So during a photo shoot like this, it is still technically a controlled environment because I'm deciding where to place my sister or my subject in order to get the best lighting for a shot. So in this case, I'm really happy with the way both the Canon and the Sony performed. I think they're both great cameras which are more than capable of working in low light situations. As I mentioned, I got the Sony for my wedding photography work and I took the Canon 5D Mark IV to a wedding last weekend and shot some natural light photos during the reception to see what it could do. And again, in that situation, because it's not a controlled environment of a portrait shoot, sometimes there's a moment happening in an area where the lighting isn't the best or is a little bit too dark. And I did still find that my Canon was struggling quite a bit to get really nice, crisp, high quality photos in that situation. So I am still happy that I have the Sony a7 III for my weddings and I will definitely continue to use that. I also really prefer how the raw photos come out of the Sony for low lights. As I mentioned, they're a lot flatter, so it's a much better base for me to be able to work on in Lightroom and not have to push it as far as I would a Canon photo. But I would love to hear what you guys thought about the comparison photos in the comments below. Let me know if you prefer either or, or if you don't see the difference, or if you don't really care. Just let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and hearing your discussions and things like that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you all next time. Bye.